If you love Asian food, then this video is for you. and welcome to Sugar Spice Nice. My name is Shweta and in this video, I'm sharing with you seven restaurants sharing amazing Asian food. Whether it's dim sums, noodles, fried rice, sushi or anything else in the Asian cuisine, I'm sure you like something or the other at at least one of these restaurants. And some of these restaurants I've been visiting more and more frequently while some have been a first time try yet have really, really impressed me. So without further ado, let me take you to the first restaurant which is a place called Tao. This is Tao Asian Kitchen in the Bandra Reclamation area in Mumbai. The restaurant has a Chinese inspired ambience. The paintings, the sculptures and the colors instantly put you in the mood for an oriental meal. There are different kinds of seating options available. You can choose between cozy booths or bigger tables or the ones with more light. What sets this one apart is the variety that they offer. That too pure vegetarian. And they also will have options for jain or without onion and garlic. Their menu has delicacies from all over Asia. You will find Chinese, Japanese, Indonesian and so many more. The best way to experience all of these flavors is by trying their omakase. Omakase literally means we leave it to you chef. That's their seven course chef's tasting menu and it is an unlimited meal at Rs 17.99 per person. At first, you get some complimentary kimchi on the table. Kimchi is a traditional Korean dish. It's basically spicy fermented cabbage. Here it is topped with some black sesame seeds and it tastes really fresh. This is the first course of the omakase. It's soup. It's called Tao's Chimney Pot. It's a clear soup with lots of veggies and glass noodles in it. There are large chunks of tofu as well. Even the veggies are kept big and chunky and they add a bit of a crunch to this meal. The second course is dim sums. This one here is water chestnut with broccoli dim sum. And this is Peking chili oil dim sum. I tried these with some chili vinegar. There's also some chili oil and Szechuan sauce on the side. Third course is the crispy lotus stem. The quantity is quite good and the crunchiness in this is really enhancing the feel of this dish. After this, there is sushi and it's presented so so beautifully. We have creamy avocado maki and crispy tempura uramaki. There's a little bit of wasabi on the side as well. Next, we have cottage cheese in chili basil sauce. There are huge pieces of paneer coated in a spicy and tangy kind of sauce. It's the edamame and chives cake. This one is the last appetizer of this meal. Just look at the amount of fried garlic on top. The edamame cake is actually like a cake, a bit soft and fluffy and along with the garlic and the garnish, it's just yum. After this, you can ask for a repeat of whichever appetizers you want. Then you can move on to the main course. This is Szechuan rice, udon noodles and mixed veggies in black bean sauce. The Szechuan rice is a bit on the stickier side and it's not like the regular spicy one that we have. This is a relatively subtle flavor. The udon noodles have some baby corn and spinach in it. These are on the thicker side but both the rice and the noodles pair really well with the black bean sauce. It has a sour and savory kind of taste. There are lots of exotic veggies in this. I can see zucchini, broccoli, mushrooms as well. The next and the last course is dessert. You can choose whichever you want from the menu. I chose the honey noodles with ice cream. These are fried flat noodles covered in honey topped with a little bit of black sesame seeds and honestly it's literally dripping with honey. They even taste sweeter than the ice cream by themselves. But this combo is just such a perfect end to this omakase experience. According to me, this is a really great way to experience Asian cuisine, especially if you're keen on trying different dishes. This meal will make sure you end up trying as many flavors as possible. The quantity of each course is very filling and as it's an unlimited meal, you can ask for more. But it cannot be shared and the price is Rs 17.99 per person. If you are looking for a lighter option in food, then you can check out their a la carte menu as well. This here is water chestnut in kung pao sauce. The whole piece of water chestnut is covered in the sauce and it's honestly quite difficult to break. The sauce pairs really well with the texture of the water chestnut but this has such an appetizing taste. This place also has a good variety of Asian desserts. If you want to try something very authentic, then you can try their ginger candy with ice cream. You get two big scoops of the ice cream of your choice. 
and then there are pieces of ginger candy inside. If you enjoy the zing of ginger, then you will definitely enjoy this. According to me, this place tops in terms of food, taste, ambience, everything. If you are in search of a restaurant that strikes the perfect balance between value for money and a good dining experience, then Tao Asian Kitchen in Bandra is a great choice. Let's move to a bit of fine dining. This is Goma inside Radisson in Goregaon. Radisson is a five-star hotel in Mumbai and their Asian restaurant Goma lives up to their prestigious reputation. The place has a very modern and contemporary ambience. You can see all the different kind of seating options available here. On this side is the sushi counter and there is also a bar area to enjoy some artisanal drinks and chill. This place offers a wide range of Asian flavors and a really huge variety of dim sums and sushi. But the majority of dishes here here are Japanese and Chinese. This is one of their authentic soups, spiced yuzu prawn soup and the presentation is just so lovely. This is a good option to try if you want to try a Japanese style soup in non-vegetarian. But if you want to try a bit of Indo-Chinese here then you can try their manchao soup. It's a little spicy and quite thick much like the one we usually have but it's a great way to begin your indulgence here. Another authentic speciality here are dim sums. These are edamame truffle, mushroom baos and poached water chestnut dim sums. The mushroom baos actually do look like mushrooms and inside as well is a filling made from mushrooms. This one here has a creamy edamame filling and the outer covering is really thin. But the best one from these are the poached water chestnut ones. These come with a Beijing sauce and that sauce has got all the flavor. And that bit of chili on top gives it a mildly spicy taste. Another dish you must try here is the turnip cake. This is basically steamed and fried turnip. So the turnip is a bit soft on the inside and on the outside it has a thin crispy layer. It tastes even better with the garnish. In terms of main course they have different kinds of rice, noodles and even a few Thai style curries. I tried their burn garlic rice, veg udon noodles and hot garlic sauce. The rice looks pretty simple but the amount of garlic on top definitely adds such a lot of zing. There are edamame beans in it as well. The hot garlic sauce pairs very nicely with the rice. The sauce has got a lot of veggies and the rice is kind of sticky and together the taste and texture is just amazing. The veg udon noodles here look like a dish in themselves. It's got some crunchy veggies and sprouts in it. The taste is on the sweeter side, a bit different from other places but honestly really enjoyable. You can end this meal with one of their delectable desserts. They have some Asian ones as well as things like cheesecake, smooths and ice cream. This here is the Goma Cheesecake. It's a piece of a classic cheesecake with some blueberry ice cream on the side, some berry compote and fruits and cream cheese. Another dessert is Crunchy Hazelnut Roulade. This one is for all the chocolate lovers because it's got chocolate mousse, chocolate ice cream, chocolate bark and crunchy hazelnut. Both the desserts have a lot going on for them, both in terms of quantity and flavor. Whenever you are here, don't miss out on these. I think overall this restaurant offers a wonderful dining experience. I love that they also have a lot of Jain and vegan options. The prices are a little bit higher, but it's nothing short of a 5-star dining experience. I have already shared a complete experience video from Goma on my channel before. If you'd like to watch that, then go and click on the link in the description box. The next place is Sesame, a classy modern restaurant in Juhu inside the Hyatt centric hotel. Along with Asian, they also serve European and Indian cuisine. They have an open kitchen here and you can watch your food get freshly prepared and assembled. They have sushi, dim sums, baos and even Chinese tea. The teapot itself is so beautiful. You can see the intricate work on it. Even the cups are so pretty and vintage. If you want to chill with your friends, chat for a while, then you should definitely come and do it over this tea. In food, I found the manchao soup really interesting. It is a white manchao soup. I think it doesn't have soy sauce. You can see the finely chopped veggies inside and even the consistency is quite like the manchao soup that we usually have. But it's not as sour and spicy as the other one. In the dim sum section, they don't have too many options but the ones that they have are quite unique and delicious. These here are the edamame dim sums and kimchi bowls. The vegetarian ones cost between Rs 450 to 650 and these are the non-vegetarian ones and you get options in prawns, chicken and pork. These cost around Rs 750 each. An appetizer that you can try here is the crispy lotus stem. It's fried lotus stem covered in a sweet and tangy sauce. The sauce also has some onion and some capsicum. This dish is supremely crispy and so flavorful. 
In the mains, I'd recommend their udon noodles in tonkatsu sauce, which makes for a very fulfilling and tasteful meal. In terms of dessert, they have the most quirky dessert. It's wasabi ice cream. I'd never imagined I'd be tasting wasabi ice cream. And the wasabi in it is not overpowering in itself, but the flavor definitely makes its presence felt. These come with a side of honey and grated coconut. And adding these toppings definitely made the ice cream much better for me. For me, this restaurant wins for the kind of unique dish that it serves, right from the white manchao to the wasabi ice cream. If you are someone who enjoys exploring such creations, then Sesame is the place for you. Next place is Zen Mai in Santa Cruz. It is a fine dining restaurant mainly serving Japanese, Chinese and Thai cuisine. The interiors are a mix of contemporary and ancient Asian culture. It's quite huge and there's ample space to sit, relax and indulge. They also have a beautiful bar area where you can try these beautifully crafted drinks. In fact, they have a drink with Tabasco sauce in it and just to amp up that flavor, they also line the rim of the glass with some red chili powder. It's not too spicy but you will definitely feel that Tabasco hotness after a few sips. But if this is too much for you and you want a few more easy options, then you can try their lemonade or different mocktails or cocktails. In terms of food, I'd recommend the vegetable crystal dim sums. These are literally melt in your mouth. I think you can even see how thin the covering is. Another dish that is a must try here is their crispy lotus stem. The lotus stem is very thin and that has made these even more crunchier. If you want to grab a smaller bite, then you can also try their wet spring rolls. For the main course, you can try their firecracker rice. So this looks like sticky rice in the center and the rest of the plate is filled with veggies and some spicy sauce. And it's topped with lots of black sesame. The presentation of this dish is so beautiful and the taste is also just as good as it looks. For dessert, you can try their Lotus Biscoff Cheesecake. It is super sweet and the texture is so smooth. The lower part is the Lotus Biscoff Crumble and I think even the cheesecake has a bit of that flavor. All in all, if you want to enjoy a nice leisurely meal in a luxurious atmosphere, then you should try out Zen Mai. Another Asian restaurant I love is Fu. They have multiple outlets throughout the city and this one is in Andheri West. This place has indoor as well as outdoor seating. I'd suggest if the weather is good, sit outside. The outdoor seating of this place is made up like that of a Japanese Zen garden. You can also choose to sit by the cherry blossom trees here to have an even more gorgeous experience. There are also these cabana style seating areas which look super cozy. They have a huge variety of Asian delicacies. You'll even find a few drinks which are Asian inspired. This here is Tom Yum iced tea. It's got lime juice, Thai chili and sugar syrup blended with black tea. It tastes quite strong but feels super refreshing. I was told that they make all their syrups and stuff in-house. If you value this kind of a thing in a restaurant, then you should definitely give this one a try. In terms of food, you should definitely try out their soup. This is their hot and sour soup with broccoli, tofu and some greens. The sourness is very apparent but the pieces of tofu and broccoli help to dial it down. They also have a few Asian salads here. This is Som Tam salad, a Thai style salad made from raw papaya. It's also got some tomatoes, beans and some peanuts as well. The overpowering taste in this salad is not from papaya or the dressing, it's from the peanuts actually. They add such a lovely nutty flavour and crunch to the salad. Now a visit to an Asian restaurant is incomplete without trying the dim sums or dumplings. Here's what Foo has has to offer. These are veg crystal dumplings filled with finely chopped carrot, water chestnut and celery and the covering is almost translucent. These are an exceptional choice. Another option are these vibrant looking cottage cheese dumplings. The colour of the covering is obtained from blue pea flowers. This one tastes creamy because of the paneer and you can spice it up with one of these sauces. You can also try their broccoli dumplings. There is minced broccoli inside and the colour of these dumplings is obtained from pureeing bok choy leaves. I like that the majority majority of their presentation ingredients are naturally obtained. Here are their freshly steamed veg baos. These are so soft. The filling has a sweet chilli kind of taste. Interestingly, the dip is made from spring onion and peppercorn. And there is fried quinoa on top. Other than dumplings and baos, you can try their sushi as well. They have lots of variety in vegetarian and non-vegetarian. This one here is the aburi veg maki, made from avocados, beetroot, yam beans, spicy miso and cheese on top. In the appetite, 
advertisers, I'd recommend their Thai lotus root and Hunan baby chili potatoes. The potatoes are the perfect bite size and have a sweet aftertaste. The Thai lotus root here is not as crispy as the other places. Even the taste is quite different, but it's definitely enjoyable. In the main course, I'd suggest the combination of blue butter Japanese fried rice and the faux yellow curry. The rice is actually thick and chewy and the curry is Thai style curry. It has a very strong coconut flavor along with a hint of curry leaves. It also has veggies in it like water chestnut, carrots, zucchini. If you want to have noodles instead of rice, then go for the La Yu Ba Main. These have a lot of fried garlic and spring onions and they honestly don't need any side. They're good just by themselves. All the food here is so colorful, it is a visual delight. And this applies to their dessert as well. This is a dessert platter. The smoke in this is from the dry ice and there are quite a few things in here. There are assorted cut fruits, this is a black sesame marble cheesecake, coconut ice cream, mango pudding and a hazelnut dough. I think this is a must try when you come here. Fu has multiple outlets in Mumbai and I have made a detailed video on my experience here. If you'd like to watch more of it, then you can go and check out the link in the description box. Next place is Yazu in Lower Perel, a fancy fine dining restaurant with Japanese and Korean aesthetics. This restaurant started and gained popularity in Goa and is now in Mumbai. This place mainly offers delicacies from Japan, China and Thailand. You can enjoy a variety of drinks, dim sums, salads, noodles and more. They have a good balance between vegetarian and non-vegetarian options. I'd recommend the veg crystal dumplings here. These have a very very thin covering and the stuffing is just as good. A side dish to try here is the turnip cake which comes with so much fried garlic. It's just amazing. You can also go for the crispy lotus root here. Its presentation is so minimalistic yet beautiful. And the taste is on the sweet and spicy side. The spicy ramen noodles here are a good choice in the mains. They are tossed in a spicy sauce with some veggies. For dessert, I'd recommend the hazelnut chocolate bomb. It has a huge chocolate bark in the center and there are pieces of hazelnut on top. Overall, Yazoo has quite a rich representation of Asian cuisine and is a fun place to enjoy an Asian meal with friends. Next restaurant and the last one for this video is Khao Chao in Bandra. If you are looking at a slightly more affordable option for Asian food and one with a heavy desi Chinese flavor, then this is it. It's a cute, lively restaurant on the ever-bustling linking road in Bandra. In spite of being slightly smaller, it doesn't feel cramped. The vibe of this place is a bit chill and casual and the decor fits very well with the Asian theme, especially the lighting and the wall tapestry. They mainly serve Chinese suited to an Indian palate here and you can try their stir-fry, baos, momos, dim sums, noodles. But I'd suggest you to try the sizzler here because honestly they do it really well. And just look at it, it looks so organized. The cabbage leaves are made into a bowl and the good stuff is inside this. This is cottage cheese in chili garlic sauce and there is veg fried rice. You can choose between rice or hakka noodles. The pieces of cottage cheese are quite big and there are a lot in here. And they stay hot for the longest time, which just retains that sizzler feel. The sizzler is easily sufficient for two and extremely filling. I think this restaurant has a really welcoming vibe and delicious food. It's a nice and lively spot to hang out, grab a bite and experience good Chinese food. So those were my top picks for Asian food in Mumbai city currently. I know there are many many more, in fact I have done a food on Asian restaurants before as well and those include some really legendary classic restaurants. So definitely check out that video as well. I'm going to link it in the description box along with the location and other details of all the restaurants mentioned in this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did then you know what you have to do. Hit that like button, share it with your friends and family and subscribe to my channel for more. And that is really it. I'll see you in my next video. Bye!